It looks like a decent enough place to live, a cozy two-story downtown apartment near the University of Southern California. But walk around the corner and you find this. So close you can see you can touch the, the window and the wall at the same time. Beyond this wall, an oil drilling site. We thought it was a construction site for a long time because we didn't know that this sort of thing happened. But uh, I guess there's oil here? Yeah, there's oil. Los Angeles is home to the largest urban oil field in the country. There are almost 800 active wells in the city of Los Angeles and almost 4,000 in LA County. It's one of the things that surprised me most when I moved to LA, not just how many pump jacks there were in the city's core, but how close they were to people's homes. Drive a little further and you end up here in this beautiful park. Widen out the shot, there they are, moving rhythmically like giant metronomes. In this area, in South LA, there are almost 100 wells, on average two tennis court lengths away from residential neighborhoods. Behind this wall, there's a slant drilling operation right across from houses there, and as you can see, right next to a baseball diamond. Maya Golden Krasner from the Center for Biological Diversity came out to meet me near one of the jacks, meters away from this guy's cookout. Recently, we compiled data from the state of California and discovered that a lot of California's oil is particularly dirty, and in fact, in some places, is um, dirtier and more energy intensive even than Canadian tar sands. And drilling itself has huge impacts. It can release um, hydrogen sulfides. Those can cause burning lungs, um, nausea, nosebleeds, dizziness. It releases benzene and other similar chemicals that are carcinogens. Here is a sponge. It's okay. It's so hot inside I'm sweating, but Alexis Camilla has kept her windows closed for about six years, ever since she first smelled it. Como huele. The odor is so strong, she says, they try to perfume it with the smell of fruit or other things. We suffer a lot from headaches. It's contaminated air. From up here on the roof, you can see it, a drilling site that for years, neighbors say, made them sick. It's maybe about five times I was to the hospital because I have a lot of headache. To find out why, I go back to that first site in downtown LA and meet up with community organizer Nikki Wong. Um, right behind this gate, you know, not 20, 30 feet from bedroom windows, and there's no local notification to neighbors that this extremely toxic, corrosive um, substance is coming into close proximity to them. Wong recently published a review of studies that examined the health effects of drilling sites. There's a lot of evidence for chronic exposure to toxins contributing to long-term significant health um, issues. The companies will say, well, we test the air, you know, there are no, you know, uh, adverse effects being found. A lot of their standards for emissions um, those limits were really set for worker safety. It doesn't consider um, people um, who live next to the site 24-7. You notice something else when you visit these urban drilling sites. Take this downtown neighborhood. It has the second lowest household income levels in the city. 70% of the residents are non-white. It's a very clear racist. Go west, she tells me, to the richer areas. So I do starting in Beverly Hills. Unlike the downtown ones, this drilling site is totally covered. The next one is even better disguised. First, I couldn't find it, but you can see it there. It just looks like an office building, no windows. The entire pumping operation is totally hidden, so it's not an eyesore. And as you can see, it's totally enclosed, so it prevents pollution. Big difference. A report by the NAACP released this week found that African Americans are exposed to 38% more polluted air than white Americans because so many of them live so close to oil and gas operations. And then there are the leaks. So right next to these houses, there's a pump jack here you can see. And just last week, residents found bags of dirt soaked with oil evidence of a 6,000 liter spill, which wasn't disclosed by the operator, and you can still smell the oil. Now the city of Los Angeles is studying new regulations, a mandatory 760 meter buffer between oil production and homes, schools, parks, and churches. But here, for instance, when we can see it right across the street, that 
wouldn't be possible. You'd have to shut this one down, for instance. Yeah, they need to shut down. And that's the problem. The oil pipes and jacks are like roots and branches in this city. Authorities predict that the buffer would shut down 90% of the city's oil production. Industry advocates say that would kill a potential oil boom since Los Angeles is sitting on one of the richest shale oil reserves in the U.S. If the city of L.A. and the state of California, you know, really props itself up as uh, climate leaders um, in the country, I think this will be a real um, important sort of testing ground for if we're going to actually uphold that. Back at the downtown site, McCandless is heading out to yoga before her classes. She still doesn't know what to make of what's happening feet from her bedroom beyond the wall. At this point, we're not sure, and we're also not sure how long we'll be living here, so. Mm -hmm. But for Camilla, moving would be too expensive. Her only hope, she says, that buffer the city's debating, which would push this operation out of her neighborhood for good. I hope they listen to our voices, she says, and that officials will help us in our battle. Until then, she says, they'll have to play indoors and keep their windows closed. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, Los Angeles.